Hello this is Nursing School, today we are going to study skeleton system, this is part 2 of our unit, first part are uploaded on this channel, you may found it in playlist of anatomy and physiology. My name is Patrick let's start together the second part of our unit. Welcome to Nursing School. Welcome to Nursing School. Part 2. Axial Skeleton. The skeleton is subdivided into two major divisions which are, the axial and appendicular. The axial skeleton forms the vertical, central axis of the body and includes all bones of the head, neck, chest, and back. The axial skeleton of the adult consists of 80 bones, including the skull, the vertebral column, and the thoracic cage. The skull is formed by 22 bones. Also associated with the head are an additional seven bones, including the hyoid bone and the ear ossicles, three small bones found in each middle ear. The vertebral column consists of 24 bones, each called a vertebra, plus the sacrum and coccyx. The thoracic cage includes the 12 pairs of ribs, and the sternum, the flattened bone of the anterior chest. The cranium, skull, is the skeletal structure of the head that supports the face and protects the brain. It is subdivided into the facial bones and the brain case, or cranial vault. In the adult, the skull consists of 22 individual bones, 21 of which are immobile and united into a single unit. The 22nd bone is the mandible, lower jaw, which is the only movable bone of the skull. All but one of the bones of the skull are joined together by sutures, which are interlocking, immovable joints. Only the mandible, jawbone, is attached to the rest of the skull by a freely movable joint. Parietal bone The parietal bone forms most of the upper lateral side of the skull. These are paired bones, with the right and left parietal bones joining together at the top of the skull. Each parietal bone is also bounded anteriorly by the frontal bone, inferiorly by the temporal bone, and posteriorly by the occipital bone. Temporal bone. The temporal bone forms the lower lateral side of the skull. Cranium, the box-like cranium, is composed of eight large flat bones. Except for two paired bones, the parietal and temporal, they are all single bones. Frontal bone. The frontal bone forms the forehead, the bony projections under the eyebrows, and the superior part of each eye's orbit. Parietal bones. The paired parietal bones form most of the superior and lateral walls of the cranium. They meet in the midline of the skull at the sagittal suture and form the coronal suture, where they meet the frontal bone. Temporal bones. The temporal bones lie inferior to the parietal bones, they join them at the squamous sutures. Several important bone markings appear on the temporal bone. The external acoustic meatus is a canal that leads to the eardrum and the middle ear. It is the route by which sound enters the ear. The styloid process, a sharp, needle-like projection, is just inferior to the external auditory meatus. Many neck muscles use the styloid process as an attachment point. The zygomatic process is a thin bridge of bone that joins with the cheekbone, zygomatic bone, anteriorly. The mastoid process, which is full of air cavities, mastoid sinuses, is a rough projection posterior and inferior to the external acoustic meatus. It provides an attachment site for some muscles of the neck. Like sternoclenoid mastoid muscle. The jugular foramen, at the junction of the occipital and temporal bones, allows passage of the jugular vein, the largest vein of the head, which drains the brain. Occipital bone, the occipital bone is the most posterior bone of the cranium. It forms the base and back wall of the skull. The occipital bone joins the parietal bones anteriorly at the lambdoid suture. In the base of the occipital bone is a large opening, the foramen. Magnum, the foramen magnum, surrounds the lower part of the brain and allows the spinal cord to connect with the brain. Sphenoid bone, the butterfly-shaped sphenoid bone spans the width of the skull and forms part of the floor of the cranial cavity. The central part of the sphenoid bone is riddled with air cavities, the sphenoidal sinuses. Ethmoid bone, 
the ethmoid bone is very irregularly shaped and lies anterior to the sphenoid. It forms the roof of the nasal cavity and part of the medial walls of the orbits. Facial bones 14 bones compose the face. 12 are paired, only the mandible and vomer are single. Maxillae, the two maxillae, or maxillary bones, fuse to form the upper jaw. All facial bones except the mandible join the maxillae, thus they are the main, or keystone, bones of the face. The maxillae carry the upper teeth in the alveolar process. Extensions of the maxillae called the palatine processes form the anterior part of the hard palate of the mouth. Like many other facial bones, the maxillae contain sinuses, which drain into the nasal passages. The These paranasal sinuses, whose naming reveals their position surrounding the nasal cavity, it function is lighten the skull bones and amplify the sounds we make as we speak. For sutures 1. Coronal, unites frontal bone and both parietal bones. 2. Sagittal, unites the two parietal bones. 3. Lambdoid, unites both parietal bones to the occipital bone. 4. Squamous, unites the parietal and temporal bones on the lateral aspect on each side of the skull. Fontanelles. Fontanelle is a space between the bones of the skull in an infant or fetus, where ossification is not complete and the sutures not fully formed. 1. Anterior fontanelle, between parietal bones and frontal bones. 2. Posterior fontanelle, between parietal bones and occipital bone. 3. 2. Anterolateral, located laterally between frontal, parietal, temporal, and sphenoid bones. 4. 2. Posterolateral, located laterally between parietal, occipital, and temporal bones. Vertebral column. Flexible, can move forward, backward, sideways, and rotate. Encloses the spinal cord. Supports the head. Provides point of attachment for ribs, pelvic girdle, muscles of the back. Contains 26 vertebrae, 7 cervical. The 7 cervical vertebrae, identified as C1 to C7, form the neck region of the spine. The first two vertebrae, Atlas and axis are different because they perform functions not shared by the other cervical vertebrae. 12th thoracic. The 12th thoracic vertebrae, T1 to T12, are all typical. They are larger than the cervical vertebrae and are distinguished by the fact that they are the only vertebrae to articulate with the ribs. 5 lumbar. The 5 lumbar vertebrae, L1 to L5, have massive, block like bodies. They're short, Hatchet-shaped spinous processes make them look like a moose head from the lateral aspect. Sacrum. The sacrum is formed by the fusion of five vertebrae. Superiorly it articulates with L5, and inferiorly it connects with the coccyx. 1. Coccyx. The coccyx is formed from the fusion of three to five tiny, irregularly shaped vertebrae sternum. The sternum, breastbone, is a typical flat bone and the result of the fusion of three bones, the manubrium, body, and xiphoid process. It is attached to the first seven pairs of ribs. The sternum has three important bony landmarks which are the jugular notch, the sternal angle, and the xiphosternal joint. The jugular notch, concave upper border. Of the manubrium, can be palpated easily, generally it is at the level of the third thoracic vertebra. The sternal angle results where the manubrium and body meet at a slight angle to other, so that a transverse ridge is formed at the level of the second ribs. Ribs. Twelve pairs of ribs form the walls of the bony thorax. Contrary to popular misconception, men do not have one rib fewer than women. All the ribs articulate with the vertebral column posteriorly and then curve downward and toward the anterior body surface. The true ribs, the first seven pairs, attach directly to the sternum by costal cartilages. False ribs, the next five pairs, either attach indirectly to the sternum or are not attached to the sternum at all. The last two pairs of false ribs lack the sternal attachments, so they are also called floating ribs. The intercostal spaces, spaces between the ribs, 
are filled with the intercostal muscles, which aid in breathing. This is the end of the second part of this unit. In third part, I will focus on the appendicular skeleton. Thank you for following Nursing School. My name is Patrick. See you soon.